I'm Steve for This With Cars, and I can't believe it, but it has been four years since my first video with my TVR Vixen 2500. It's been at least three years since I made a video working on this car, so it's time to get it back on the lift and give it some TLC. Let's take a quick look underneath the bonnet. This is called a Vixen 2500 because it uses the 2.5 liter from the Triumph TR6. This is also a part of the last run of the Vixen 2500. This car is one of 96 Vixens to use the M-Series chassis. So this 1972 Vixen has the same chassis as my 1972 TVR 2500M. The brakes on this car have not been working that well, so today I'm going to take a look at fixing that. So I'm going to get it up in the air and get these wheels off. In my last video, these are the wheels that I got from England. They are holding up really nice. I'm really happy with these. And looks like this brake is completely locked up. So I think we definitely have a problem here. Let's see if the wheel even turns with a long ratchet on it. Does turn. There's two main reasons why your front brakes might lock up like this. The first is that the hose has gone bad and it's actually not able to flow fluid very easily. You can put more pressure through the hose than what could be returned. So if the hose is swollen up on the inside, pushing your brake pedal, you can push the fluid this direction, but it acts like a one-way valve, not letting the fluid go back the other direction, releasing your brakes. And the easy way to check if it's your brake hose or not is to open the bleeder valve on your brakes. And if that releases the pressure and then your brakes turn, you know it was the hose. The other reason, at least for disc brakes, that your brakes might be seized is that the calipers itself has become stuck. The pistons in these calipers are a finely polished cylinder. And when that gets dirty, it can get jammed up in there. So first I'm going to release the pressure on the bleeder and see if it releases the brakes. Right up here on the top of the caliper is a bleed screw. I'm going to unscrew this a little bit to open it up. There we go. If we see any fluid come out, then we know it's open. There it's open. And the caliper is still very stuck. The pressure has been released, but the rotor still does not turn. So our problem is in the caliper itself. Let's check the other side real quick. On this side, wheel is dragging slightly, but it does turn. This side might have its problems, but it's not locked up like the right side. I'm going to take the brake calipers off and I don't want all the brake fluid to leak out of the master cylinder. So I'm going to use a pretty cool tool. This tool here will keep the brake pedal pushed down, and if the brake pedal is pushed down, that will block the fluid from coming out of the reservoir and leaking down through the open hoses. To use this, you just clip it onto the steering wheel, and then push this rod down until it is pushing on the brake pedal. Then you can turn this knob to make it even tighter. The steering wheel will hold it all in place, and that will keep the brake pedal down, not allowing the fluid to leak out. I'm going to take the calipers off and the only thing holding them on are these two bolts and the brake hose. This one's stuck to the rotor a little bit. Here's the two brake calipers, this one from the right side of the car, this one from the left side of the car. I have my handy ratcheting brake spreader. Let's get this in here and see if we can push these pistons apart or not.
If it does start to push the pistons out, we should see brake fluid come out of this port right here. Getting a little bit of fluid out. It does feel like it's moving this caliper. Those pads look a lot looser than they were. Let's try the other side. This is the caliper from the right side of the car. Again, if this is able to spread the pads out, then we'll see brake fluid come out of this port. That's pretty much as tight as I can go. I didn't feel it move. We don't have any brake fluid coming out. So I think this side was completely seized. If I don't replace these calipers, I will at least need a rebuild kit. But finding parts for a TVR can be challenging at times. Most British cars share the same parts between cars. And I was trying to think of what other cars would use this exact caliper. And it just so happens that I have one right here. The GT6 that I'm working on has this exact same caliper and I've already put a new one on this car because it's so cheap to order a brand new one that it's not really worth rebuilding them. So the part number that I ordered for Moss for that other car is 180-568 which is this pair of new calipers. Now one of the neat things that you can do on the Moss website especially when you own it, a car like this is you can go under fitment and this will tell you every car that they sell parts for that also uses these brake calipers. So the Austin Healey BJ8, the GT6 as you just saw, the MGC, the Triumph TR3 through 4A, and the Triumph TR6. So if I was looking for brake parts for my TVR, these are the more common cars that use those same front brakes. The calipers are here get these open one thing to note is that the calipers do come bare they do not come with pads or pins so you either need to reuse your old hardware or buy all new hardware for these calipers so getting these installed is just a quick reversal of what I've already done and then bleed the brakes and then we can test the brakes and see if it has fixed the car or not now that the pads and pins are out of the calipers, we can see just how rusty these things are. If we look at this one over here, this is how they get that way. The rubber seal gets torn and then moisture gets inside of the caliper in between the piston and the cylinder wall, causing surface rust. And then your cylinder gets stuck in the caliper and then no longer moves properly. The new calipers are on. I did use the old pins and pads. They cleaned up just fine. One tip for if your brakes were sticking like mine were, once you've made your repair, go back in the car and press on the brakes as hard as you can, and then come out and make sure that your brakes are not stuck. Because even though you may have fixed one thing, there are plenty of reasons why your brakes might be sticking on an old car. So I'm going to push the brake pedal down several times as hard as I can, absolutely as hard as I can. Then let's go see, make sure that the wheel still turns. The side turns. The side still turns. So now let's take it for a drive and see if the brakes work better now. Okay, before I leave the parking lot, I want to test the brakes out, make sure that they work before I get on the road. I'm going to get up some speed and then slam on the brakes as hard as I can. That seemed to stop me pretty good, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's take it for a drive. I really like TBRs. They're well-balanced cars, like a Lotus, but they seem to have more power. The rear end likes to kick out on them. 
and they are just fun to drive. They are great to look at. The TBR is a great looking car. I love the looks of this thing. that this Jomar Coupe look has stayed so long through the Grand Churas and the Vixens and the Griffiths because this is a great look. That's going to be it for today. If you want to see more TBR content, comment below and click subscribe.